We know why we need spanning tree, so let's now look at how it works. There are a few different versions of spanning tree. We're going to focus on the original version for now, just to understand the basics, and then we'll look at the improvements offered in RSTP later. The first piece of the spanning tree puzzle is the BPDU, or Bridge Protocol Data Unit. This is a message that switches start sending out their interfaces from the moment they come online. Each switch will see the BPDUs from other switches. This is how they initially discover each other and learn details about their neighbours. As each switch needs to know about other switches, they need unique ways to identify themselves, and this is through the switch ID. This is made up of two values, the bridge priority and the switch's MAC address. Switches can have more than one MAC address, but they will select one to represent the switch as a whole. Cisco's term for this is called the base MAC. We can find the base MAC by running show spanning tree. Get used to this command as we're going to be using it a lot. This is a good time to clear one thing up. In spanning tree terms, switches are called bridges. This goes back to a time before switches existed, so whenever you see something referring to a bridge, just think of it as a switch. Here under the bridge ID there is an address. This is the base MAC. It's a unique value, so no other switches will have it. Each switch or bridge also has a priority. We can see this here as well. By default, this is 32,768. Don't worry too much about the rest of what you see here, we will go through it soon enough. The main thing is that you can see the MAC and the priority, and these make up the bridge ID. The bridge priority is a number from 0 to 61,440. However, you can't just pick any number from this range. This value needs to be divisible by 4,096. That seems like a bit of a weird requirement, doesn't it? Well, there is actually a reason for it. Within the BPDU is a 16-bit bridge priority field. The actual priority starts at the 13th bit. Lower bits make up the extended system ID, which we'll talk about another time. The point is, we can't just use every value from the 16-bit range for the bridge priority. Don't worry too much if it doesn't make a lot of sense yet. The important part to remember now is that a valid priority needs to be divisible by 4096. So as I said, the default bridge priority is 32,768, which is about halfway through that range. If we want, we can change this value to something else. And making that change is really very simple. In configuration mode, we use the spanning tree command, enter the VLAN that we're configuring, which is something you have to do on Cisco switches, and then give it a priority. We'll talk about why we might change that priority in a moment. So the bridge priority and the switch MAC address make the switch ID. This is one of the pieces of information that switches share with each other when they start sending and receiving BPDUs. It's good to get to know your neighbour, but there's a little more to it than that. As the name suggests, spanning tree uses a tree-like structure, with the main links branching out to other switches. One of the switches in the topology will become the root bridge. This is the most important place in the topology, and it is decided based on the bridge ID that we looked at a moment ago. The switch with the lowest bridge ID becomes the root bridge. And of course, we can influence this. We can't change the switch's MAC address, but we can change the bridge priority as we saw earlier. If two switches have the same priority, the lowest MAC address breaks the tie. When they first come online, every switch thinks that it's the root bridge. So they'll start telling other switches all about it in their BPDUs. These messages are sent every two seconds by default. So when a new switch comes online and claims to be root, it will send BPDUs. Keep in mind that in the original spanning tree protocol, only the root bridge would send BPDUs. Other switches would simply forward them on after receiving them, flooding them through the network. So if a switch starts sending BPDUs and it has a better, that is lower bridge ID, its BPDUs are called superior BPDUs. If a switch that thinks it's a root bridge receives a superior BPDU from another switch, it will realize that it can't be the root bridge. In the original spanning tree, that means it would stop sending BPDUs of its own. What it will do instead is forward the superior BPDUs out its other links if it has any. 
In our example, there are no other links to send the BPDU out. Of course, it won't send the BPDU on the link that it received it on. The main takeaway from this is that there is a constant flood of BPDUs being sent through the switching network. Now's the time to use these quiz questions to see if you've understood what we've been talking about so far.